I'm Will um, from Past the Fall. Um, we're a kind of groove mellow death band from the UK, um, three piece as well, uh, with Sam Clean on drums and Thomas Cope. Um, yeah, this is our first time with Chris in the heavy show. So, yeah, pretty stoked to be here. Pretty stoked to have you here too, Will. Thanks for joining us today, bro. Thanks, man. Yes, yeah, pleasure. It absolutely is. So, Parts, parts of four are a band who sort of not many people over here in Australia would be too familiar with yet. So let's sort of mm. let's start off by getting to know each other a little bit. We'll treat it like a musical first date. Give us give us a bit more more of background on the band. Yeah, totally, man. Well, I mean, I don't know. Do you know a band called Desecrator? Oh, what? Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny because like we probably hmm, like our roots probably like way back. We did a tour with Desecrator around Europe, actually. Probably shit, man. It was probably like in 2015, and that was probably like the start of the band. And we were kind of like proto thrash, proggy stuff. I I think in we had a lot of good ideas. We didn't quite know where, you know, when we were just trying to cut our teeth and put it all together. And then anyway, fast forward, like oof, we did a lot of touring, and we did some stuff in Mexico, a bit in the states, Europe, UK. We just played a lot of shows, put a sound together, and then. 21 21 we uh put out from insanity's ruin which is just kind of like you know when you it, it's our debut record we had an ep before that but that's the one where we're like yeah this is our sound this is where we're going and i guess it's kind of like um for straight off the bat i'd say it's really groovy it's really big fat riffs the whole thing like our whole thing is like it's all got to swing around a groove whether it's thrash whether it's slow whether it's chilled whether it's prog whether it's groove like the whole thing's just got to sit in the pocket and that's our kind of bag really but yeah it's pretty like dark in places especially a lot of the themes on the album all right cool. so as you say mate like after releasing your first ep beggars and the liars banquet in 2013 it wasn't until your debut album from insanity's ruin in 2021 mm -hmm people really started taking notice of man mate so but when when you finished that album were you confident that you'd actually made something that could crack the market and introduce a band to the world yeah definitely i mean it was a real labor of love because like before uh you know we'd struggled with uh studios and just trying to get what we wanted and in the end it uh we, we build our own studio so actually the guitarist produced the album and it just took a really fucking long time to learn how to use the studio. <laughs> Turns out it's fucking really complicated. So <laughs> who <easy>. knew? <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> like, like, but I mean, it paid dividends because the cool thing was, it's like we're not on the we were not on the clock, you know. Like, uh, we've you know having to pay for it, so it's cool because it gave us a chance to actually just really just try and find our sound. You know, we had pieces and ideas and stuff, but we could really like. So it it actually took a lot of work. Um, but it was like the kind of that watershed where you're like okay now we've got our sounds and like we you know for example we're recording material now and it's it's coming out like way quicker because we know how to use the studio we sort of cut our teeth doing that record so yeah it was a real labor of love it's kind of like um i don't know it's like a it's kind of like a love letter or a hate letter to the world <laughs> <laughs> uh, your, your press release says that from insanity's ruin is vastly more adventurous than the band's early recordings. So yeah, you had to elaborate yeah. on that. How would you say, what, what, what do you define by adventurous? Well, I think like when we started, um, we kind of sort of came up a little bit in the UK thrash scene. I mean, we we're probably on the tail end of Evil breaking through and we've done bits and bobs around there. And I think you like totally our influences. I mean, they're quite sort of classic, I guess. They kind of like, you know, just first generation thrash um but we just love loads of 90s music and it's quite varied anyway and we sort of fell in with that crowd even though we're quite progressive so even when i'm saying it it's like we're a bit of this we're a bit of that it was blah 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 so i think we're still trying to find ourselves and then um i think on this record like you know we've got you've got the intro uh which is kind of like orchestral um there's like acoustic moments in it and and at the same time doesn't sound like a power metal album which you know i think it still sounds dark and edgy so it's kind of weird you know and then we've got kind of a like a chilled acoustic outro thing but it's still kind of dark and that's kind of the grunge side i guess coming through like the sort of dark alice in chains vibes but still running through some like yeah just really twisted distorted stuff 
<laughs> and that album came out right roughly 10 years after the band started mate so in effect it, it's pretty yeah. much a snapshot of your first decade as a band isn't it uh yeah i'd say so yeah i mean like the whole band is pretty much built around me and tom i mean i've known tom since oh fuck like shit man uh like 11 years old i guess and we were like jamming from when we were 16 and um we did like other bands and other stuff but like it's kind of like the record's like a celebration of just like brotherhood really you know it's um through all thick and thin and all the things we went through and all the shit we got up to with the old ep and touring with it and stuff you know it's kind of like yeah oof, it's it's our little statement yeah Oh, cool. Look, I know none of us have got the uh, the power to have a crystal ball, mate, but if, if you could sort of take a guess, if, if that was a snapshot of the first 10 years of the band's life, what do you reckon a snapshot of the next 10 years is going to look and sound like? Uh, do you know what? It's cool because we're like doing this new single at the moment. And um, yeah, I think actually then it's everything's going to get a lot tauter, a lot meaner, and a lot more focused. And the weird thing was because of just like personal issues and you know a lot of like just stuff going on in the background that 10 years is kind of interspaced with you know a little bit of gaps and other things going on whereas now it's just like it's all hands to the pump it's just literally every day just full tilt since we've done the the record so we kind of got kicked in the balls with covid like everybody did so <laughs> kind of put like a forced you know like a forced gap on it but i would say the 10 years to be honest i can't even begin to imagine like i'm thinking like like what we've done in the last 10 years is probably going to happen in like the next year yeah. i would say <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> fuck, you're, fuck knows you're gonna yeah. be busy brother <laughs> yeah exactly fuck fuck all else to do man might as well just fucking do some good tunes <laughs> and you also said of, of of from insanity's ruin that we've created something that is truly us so what do you mean by that that's pretty deep yeah i mean i you know i think you know just to cut straight to it is like i i really fucking love bands that just have personality and like i really love hearing music that has enough balls to just have personality like it's cool to play within a genre or a scene and i get it as well totally because i love a lot of that music but for me personally like the stuff that kind of um you know tickles my fancy is the stuff where it's like people just put the personality however fucking freakish or weird it is you know and it's a blend of like i fucking love heavy music so it's always going to be heavy but um yeah, I think I think that's kind of where we, you know, but what it means is I think when you get going, people are like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> so you just got to keep pushing it. And then, uh, you know, it's it's been really cool because like as soon as people listen to it, they're like, oh, fuck. I mean, on, on you know, some I think it's like a Marmite band, you know, in some ways, like it's not going to be for everybody. But on the whole, I think people have been really positive about it. And yeah, I'd rather kind of like, put a real piece of myself over and in the album as well it's got loads of stuff about like, the death of tom's father like mental health issues there's a lot of like stuff was you know actually happened to us that we wanted to talk about and not bullshit about you know it's just yeah for lack of sound a bit cliche it's for real <laughs> <laughs> Look, do, do me a favor bro like from, from this moment moving forward don't ever underestimate yourself and compare yourself to Marmite again because that stuff is fucking shit. <laughs> like, on this side of the world, people hate Marmite. So never, never get oh, yeah, association fucking... with Marmite, man. You'll be fucked. Yeah, yeah. Just like Vegemite. Sorry. Yeah. Fucking way more creamy, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Fucking... <laughs> uh, you, yourself and Tom actually produced the album too, mate. So what was it? Was yeah. it? difficult for you to sort of separate the musician side of the album and, and what was needed from you in your role as producer oh fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah what, thanks for your honesty right. <laughs> yeah shit i mean like ah, uh, if if some fucking musician can tell you that they can like produce their own music and have a subjective viewpoint I, they're talking out their ass i think i mean a hundred percent like what you can do is i think you can really like hone it to a point where you're almost there and you definitely need somebody else to come in and just look at it and go, ah, oh, you know, hey, actually try like this. Or I think this sounds better like that because I think it's just it's just confirmation bias. We've all got it, like with the stuff we do, 
like with you making a i don't know like with you making a podcast or whatever it's like it's tough sometimes like, oh yeah so yeah it is yeah it's difficult <laughs> <laughs> i guess that sort of brings up a good point to you though right like with technology and shit these days like it's so easy to do all that stuff yourself in house, but mm. there's a lot of a lot of young bands coming through that sort of think, oh well, I'll just produce it myself and save a bit of money. But it's probably look, unless you're really subjective as a young band, it's probably not that good an idea, is it? Because you can't yeah. criticize your own work that much, can you? No, I mean that's I mean that's the benefit of me and Tom because like we can always uh, I mean we've we've had to like destroy each other's egos so many times and so many times over there's always that other person in the room that can give us the honest feedback but I know I think you, you're probably right to some degree I mean if I could do it all again I mean it's been expensive setting it all up and it takes a lot of time to learn because actually when I was a young kid you think yeah you know you've got all this tech yeah we could do it ourselves but shit man it's a proper job you know like a real studio engineer studio producers like um it's um it's an art form you know to be honest they're just as important as bands you know like i think what a lot of people dig you know even in the records they love is the production just as much as the songwriting so you know a good studio engineer or producer is like as much a part of like a success success of a band's record you know so um so it's kind of good to get there and it also means like it's great to be in control like when you're moving it around to different like distributors but for sure i would almost recommend like a young band to work with a, a studio engineer or a producer or something because they can really steer in the right way yeah i actually remember a chat i had with alice cooper once and we were talking about a, a similar sort of thing and i sort of asked him for a bit of advice for young people in the industry and he said listen to your producer and your engineer he's got because you've got him there for a reason mm, so yeah and listen to him which makes sense yeah yeah 100 percent. i mean we probably ended up being more like dio i remember let's do an interview and he's just like yeah, they don't even bother having a producer just get a guy to twiddle the knobs but i think alice cooper is probably like more on the money i mean because the funny is this is the arrogance of youth as well a, a little bit i think like when you're young you just think oh yeah yeah uh we well, just don't you just don't know you just don't know the size of the task i mean uh i go to like a, a saying which is basically like anything good is hard yeah. you know because otherwise every fucker would be doing it so you know like uh, you, but i think people don't realize like whatever you you know you see here or consume it takes fucking hundreds of hours and people's commitment you know to do whatever it is actually not even music so yeah for sure yeah cool so it's been probably 18 months or so now since um from insanity's ruin came out so you, you've mentioned that you're working on a new song so can you tell us a bit about that yeah definitely it's pretty exciting actually because um we're just putting a lot more effort into a kind of um i don't want to give away too much but like well it's not like a national secret or anything i but won't I think, tell anyone like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just me and you right That's yeah cool. exactly mate no one listens to me <laughs> yeah and uh well we're kind of starting to see like we're just going to probably move into a little bit more of it, like a singles format and then just collate it a little bit more because we kind of want to re release a little bit more regularly and the the plus side to having the studio and taking care of it all and having it dialed in now is that we're actually pretty quick, you know, at turning around stuff that we're really happy with. So kind of going to move to, um, yeah. So into that kind of model, because especially I think these days, like, I mean, it's a bit controversial. I still love albums, but like yeah. traditionally, you know, doing the album cycle, you know, you launch it, but like, with the way people consume content now it can be a little bit dead in the water you know for a for a long time you know um so kind of moving into that idea of like string of singles a little bit more frequent and then you still collate the album the album still happens but you just don't tell people know, just... the album's happening until after a few singles <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah but yeah it's pretty cool the new one's good yeah it's gonna be like have massive massive chorus hook yeah and then it's just really really it's kind of like a lot of brutality actually it's gone really much heavier but it's still got a massive chorus with a massive hook in it so which is our kind of our, our thing really yeah it's pretty exciting yeah what sort of time frame are you looking at bro that next couple of months or are we talking second half of the year yeah yeah i think so yeah no oh no it's going to be pretty soon we're probably going to um well, yeah two months probably i would say it's going to drop yeah super cool yes yeah past the fall have also signed with worldwide agency unearth management as well mate so what does that mean for the band moving forward does it mean you're coming over here and we're gonna have a beer in person oh fuck yeah well actually we just we just parted ways with them um because they, they were just covering us yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah they can do one they're pretty good actually they're a good agency actually i'm not gonna knock them 
they do some good work in the UK, uh, but they're just based in the UK. So that's okay. kind of was the decision to part ways, basically. So it was a worldwide management group then. I know. Yeah, it's a little bit of a misnomer, isn't it? It's just not like it. Oh, man. It's like, um, yeah, it's like uh, independent independent traders, right? Yeah, it's like Peckham, <laughs> Peckham, New York and Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> and now back Australia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, going forward, just, I mean, it's pretty much me just taking care of it, really. Um, I think as it grows, like we could take somebody on board. But it's funny, we've done so much work now that it uh we build up so much contacts it just doesn't make sense until we can get somebody that can come in laterally with us that's not worth it yeah it's all... um yeah. yeah well if you ever do want to come over this way mate like fucking I've, I've got contacts galore over here mate so i don't mind booking a whole run of shows for you if you want to come over or, or oh, it's in media to, to help out i can but... organize support bands and shit bro so Oh fucking hey, yeah, let's make it happen. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent up for that. Yeah, yeah. Rough time frame. We got email address. Anyway, give us a rough time frame when you want to come over and, and what you what you're looking for from it, mate. And yeah, I'll fucking hell when you want to be here and shit, and I'll put the whole thing together for you if you want. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, let's make it happen. It would probably be end of this year or um yeah, sometime in the next. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Oh, right. Totally so I'll be up for that. Well, actually with your um with your song too, bro. Like um I don't offer this to many people at all, but um, you seem like a good cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, appearances can be deceiving. <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> so, when, when this song comes out, man, like to sort of to help you push your band a bit over here in Australia, I'll give oh, you, um, yeah, I'll give bless you, for, you uh, a free single premiere if you want. Like, they're normally a couple hundred bucks. Oh, I'll give you the one for oh, free, fucking free. hell. I'll send Mate, you, thank you so much. All right, so I'll, I'll send you an email like with just a promotion, yeah. And then, like, don't worry about the prices, but it'll just let you know what I need from you. And we'll, we'll work yeah. out something going forward, mate. And hopefully we'll give you a bit of a push and make it easy to do something for you over here. Oh, fucking Chris, you're a legend, mate. Yeah, I'd fucking, yeah. That's got me stoked. That'd be fucking brilliant. <laughs> uh, well, as soon as you mentioned you knew Desecrator, fucking, you had to be a good guy. They, they've actually caught it a day now. Yeah, I know. Like, I mean, the longest, I mean, what a fucking great farewell tour, tour as well. Really long and fucking extensive. I just can't believe it, man. I can't believe they called it. Really, uh, do you know what I mean? But I'm always, I was almost a bit in shock, really. But, well, if you're, if you're coming over hey. the end of the year, mate, you might be able to talk him out to jump on with you for just like a one final show, oh, reunion tour, and that'll, hell. that'll help. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, it'd be fucking great to get up on Red Steel Nation again, man. I tell you. Uh, yeah, and also, um, there's an Australian band called Frankenbock. Have you heard of them? They're good friends of. Um, oh no. Yeah, no. Check them out, Frankenbock. They're good, good friends. Actually, I'll send you some music by email. But they, they, them and yeah, made a real good friend. I manage Frankenbock, so we'd be able to. Oh, sick! Get Desecrator, Frankenbock, and you for. For a tour, mate, I reckon it did fucking kick. Oh, fucking A. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fucking sick, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why is it all, my man? All right, well, better finish the interview off, fucking. <laughs> so, <I'm laughs> so, thanks very much for joining us today, Will. It's been an absolute pleasure. Past the full, the old album is out now. When I say old, it's 18 months, but from Insanity's Ruin is a bloody good album. It covers a lot of a lot of musical ground, so I look forward to seeing what comes up with next. Cheers, Chris. Man, absolute fucking pleasure, man. And thank you for the support. It really means a lot.